Happy August 26th, everyone. I'm Liam, and we are playing the 2024 quest calendar, The Leaf Riders of Renwood. When last we played, Ivy attempted to glean some information from the surviving insect of our high-speed beetle wagon chase. She was largely unsuccessful, but she did gain a point of virtue for healing the insect uh, and for being kind. She's up to six. That was after uh, trying a more stern approach, uh, and that failed. And that is where we left things. So let's see what adventure is on the calendar for us today. A pet. As a token of appreciation, a bug tamer in long watch offers you a discount on one of his newly trained bugs. Okay. Um, I th did we just teleport the long watch? Uh, let's see. We've got uh, an inchworm, a green beetle, and a fur beetle. The fur beetle's cute. Uh, I don't know. I feel like I think we're gonna stick with the bugs we have. Let's look at what's going on here. Where's our party tab? The bugs. Okay. Well, we're not we're not trading in disco or tank or the baron. Maybe bumble or buzz. Bumble has a v yeah. Bumble and buzz have very small chances to activate their abilities. Bumble can add plus two constitution and Buzz can add d4 strength um, but they both need to draw a seven or better in a club or a spade and if um, these bugs uh, the inchworm's not a whole lot better but the uh, the green beetle has a better chance of activating its constitution than Bumble. So we may be we may be going with the green beetle here. 15 amber? How much amber do we have? 22. Oh. Uh, I don't know. I think uh, I think I'd rather save my money for consumables that are sure to work. <laughs> so I think we're just going to stick with who we've got. Um, yeah, so don't worry Bumble, bu Bumble or Buzz. We're... Uh, we're just going to stick with who we've got. Okay. That was a very short one. <laughs> oh, it says you... Hold on. You may purchase the first bug for 5 amber. All right. Subsequent purchases are at full price. Oh. Oh, Bumble. Well, now I feel like that's probably a good move to swap out Bumble with this green beetle. So I think we're I think we're gonna go ahead and do that. Buzz um, plus D4 strength. This this is just this is too good a deal. Sorry, Bumble. Buzz, you can hang out. Bumble, you can hang out with us. We just can't make use of you. That's what we'll do. Bumble and our old friend Sky Featherbeak, who we traded in a while ago. Um, they can still hang around. But, uh, okay, now we've got to find this green beetle sticker. Somewhere in this book, I do really like this book. It's just me. I have trouble <laughs> when it's flipped open finding this stuff. Let's see. Green beetle. Here you, here we are. Green beetle. He's got three health. Um, and if we activate him, we get D4 Constitution. I don't know if IV Solar Infusion applies to pets when using an item. No, so it doesn't. I don't. I don't think you count a pet as an, <laughs> as an item. Um, party. So where's our slot? We need a name for this green beetle. Our horn beetle is tank. Um, Nothing's nothing's coming to me. We could roll. I've got this table. Let's roll on our table. I have that right here. Here we go. So how should we do this? Should we roll? Do I have a D24? What's this guy? Is this a 24? Yeah, that's our 24 sided die. I'm gonna roll this and we'll just see what we get. 24. Lily. <laughs> I feel like we had a Lily. Lily. 
Okay, Lily it is. <laughs> Lily the green beetle. Lily. Right? We don't we got Enid. Yeah, no Lily. Okay, Lily the Green Beetle. Welcome aboard, Lily the Green Beetle. That was a short one. Uh, I'm tempted to try something here. Should we do it? I can always cut it from the video if this doesn't work out. Let me clear some... Well, we're going to need the dice. Let me move the calendar and the cards. And we'll keep, uh, keep Ivy here for now. So... There's this question of why Ivy, the White Raven, never flies. Um, this is uh, the Mythic Game Master emulator. If you watch any solo uh, role-playing games or gamers, uh, you'll, you'll likely find mention of this. This is a system that lets you that emulates a game master. Uh, you can see it's a pretty thick tone, but it's a lot of examples. It's it's a lot simpler than it than this. The, the thickness of this book <laughs> might lead you to believe. But um, the same author of Mythic, I, I only bring that up because that's such a famous system. But and people know about that, but I don't know how many people know that the author Tana Pigeon uh, writes a monthly magazine called uh, Mythic Magazine. So this is that. Let me move this out of the way. Might have to get rid of the candle for this. Let's try. Here we go. So this is issue 14. Um, so that's a while ago. I think she's in the 40s. Issue 40 or so now. Uh, but this issue contains something called Emotional Quest Adventures. And I've been wanting to try this because it basically allows you to do like a B story. Uh, wow. It just got really dark. The camera got dark. Is that because this is so bright? Yeah. I hope this is okay. Hope you guys can see this okay. Basically, you establish what the crisis was, or what what was what happened in the the character's past that is causing trouble now. Then you determine how impactful that was, and then as you play, you'll encounter fulfillment opportunities, certain scenes or events or uh, something uh, connects the character to their past in that moment. And then there's a chance of that either, they either make progress in this emotional quest in that moment, or they don't. And if they fill up their whole fulfillment value that you determined earlier, uh, and I'll explain that more in a minute, if you fill that up, then you reach fulfillment. You complete this emotional quest. So in addition to whatever's going on, um, in the present with Ivy, uh, let me turn off a, an alarm here. Whatever's going on with Ivy in the present, she's got this additional trauma, essentially, she's dealing with. And I would think it would have to be pretty impactful to keep a bird from flying. Why did Ivy encase herself in armor? Right? Like flying is a, yeah, it's an identity issue. Okay, so here's how this works. First, you establish a fulfillment issue. And Tana has created a table here. You can roll on this. And it just gets, it's a, th her stuff is all conjectural. It's a conjectural engine. It prompts you with these words. And then you use the words to um, help you decide what's going on. So when I rolled on this table for Ivy, so our fulfillment issue is the emotional pain that the character is dealing with. I rolled on this table, and there's no set number of times you roll on here. You just kind of roll. You don't want to roll too much, but you can roll enough until you get a good idea of, uh, until you get something that sparks your your imagination. I got, and if we pair these up, uh, let's see. I think I got, I rolled in pairs, and so I got injury and sibling, and, uh, yeah, break ego. I think I got like that, and seek truth. So I got those pairs, and let me get rid of those crazy lines. Um, so right, so we've got break ego. I think that happened to Ivy. Something really shattered her sense of self, and it had something to do with an injury of her sibling. 
and perhaps now she's you know this quest is about seeking the truth i think so here's what i think happened i think ivy's got a younger sister and uh when they were growing up ivy felt responsible for her and but she was showing off or they were doing something ivy feels she's to blame for some some pretty significant injury to her sister and perhaps uh whatever they were doing ivy was showing off or she was pushing her sister too hard and her sister was injured in a way that her sister can no longer fly and ivy thinks it's her fault and uh and so that is why she chooses not to fly because uh how did i articulate it ivy feels she does not deserve to be able to fly and so she encases herself in armor and that is the that is the fulfillment issue at the core of this emotional quest okay if we go back here now we want to determine a fulfillment value Tana says, the fulfillment value represents how powerful the emotional issue is and how much progress your character has made in coming to terms with it. I think Ivy's just at the start of coming to terms with it. And uh, she suggests these values. This is going to be the number we have to. So we, we're going to start at zero or one. I forget which. And uh, we want to reach this. this we're going to have to reach this value if we want to complete this emotional quest and i'm thinking this is a fairly this is going to be a this would have been a major trauma in order to stop ivy from flying so i'm going to go ahead and say we're in the 11 to 14 range and i'm going to roll a d4 and we get a 2 so we're at a 12. so that's our it's a major trauma with a value of 12. we'll call that fulfillment value 12 and we're currently i think we're at uh begins at zero we're at zero so we are at zero of 12. so we can write that down i've tried i have no idea if this is going to go well <clears throat> i don't know if we'll keep doing this i don't know how long these videos are going to go if i do uh, my first idea was to do these in addition to the calendar videos so that you could either watch them or not um and so i did try this emotional quest once before i i soloed uh the starter set for fifth edition dungeons and dragons lost minds of fandelver and i gave them emotional I had a party of four and they each had an emotional quest that proved to be too much <laughs> for me to handle and i gave up but we're gonna try it again with ivy at least i want to so that's our fulfillment value 12 we're at zero ivy feels she does not deserve to be able to fly because of whatever that that event was that injured her sister she blames herself so now as we play um impactful experiences take place during the emotional quest and they are called fulfillment opportunities now with the mythic system you generate scenes as you go with the calendar the calendar is creating all the scenes for us so we can do a couple of things we can either just decide a page uh, it would make sense for this to tie back to her trauma or uh, we can roll randomly but I, the um, there was a recent event it was back on the Monday the 19th when uh when these insects fled long watch with the bits of mushroom the it said you need to catch up to the carts that have left from your elevated perch you can utilize your leaf riding skills to glide down and aim to land on the moving cart so ivy ivy of course could fly down and do this a lot more easily than trying to navigate it by riding on a leaf um but you know she's wearing armor and uh, so I don't know. I think maybe in the experience of riding that, whatever this is, uh, connected with her experience with her sister. And in that moment, when she's gliding down onto these carts, and if I recall, she did pretty well with this, I think she felt the exhilaration of flying again. So she had this combination of feelings. Exhilaration for being who she is. She's a white raven. She knows how to fly and simultaneously the the uh, 
you know, the, the sadness, the, the shame that she feels for what she feels she was responsible for. So how do we do this fulfillment opportunity? Um, did I highlight this stuff? Here we go. A fulfillment opportunity is a moment that reminds your character of their emotional issue, making them re-experiencing it to some degree. Some degree. The epiphany is a moment where your character takes in how that fulfillment opportunity activated and altered their perception of their issue. Did your character learn from the opportunity? Did Ivy gain insight into her issue and make progress on their emotional quest? Or does Ivy regress under the weight of their pain? So in game terms, we ask the fate question. That's a mythic thing. We're just asking, we're asking, uh, we're asking the dice to tell us yes or no. So we ask the fate question, does my character grow from the epiphany? Give the fate question odds of either likely or very likely, depending on how powerful you think the opportunity was. If the opportunity touched on your character's issue, just touched on it, then it's likely. If the opportunity directly mirrored the issue in some way, the odds are very likely. So I'm going to say very likely for this. So then what do we do? We need to make a roll. Uh, so I need to find the chart that has the... Okay, so this is the fate chart that we roll on. It looks more complicated than it is. <laughs> Basically, uh, the mythic system has this chaos factor. The more uh, crazy things are going, the higher the chaos factor, um, the more stable things are, the lower the chaos factor. We don't have to worry about that for what we're doing. We're going to default to a chaos, this middle column. So we really just have to worry about this middle column, and we're only dealing with likely and very likely results. So we're only concerned with these two cells right here. So what this, how you read this is, um, we, we're going to roll percentile die, so two 10-sided dice, and if we get a 65 or less, if the odds were likely, and we rolled a 65 or less, it would be a yes. 13 or less would be an extreme yes. Above 65 is a no, above 94 is an extreme no. We're saying it's very likely that Ivy has a positive uh, fulfillment here. So we're going to roll our percentile dice, and if we get 75 or less, then it works out. And we got an 11. So now in the mythic system, when you get doubles, something special happens. But uh, we're not going to worry about that either. So basically, we just said, does my character grow from the epiphany? We said it's very, very likely that they do. We rolled and we got a yes. Uh, actually, okay, it does have the results here for exceptional yes. What was, did we get an exceptional yes? Where's that chart? Where's the chart? Mini chaos fact chart. Four to six. We did. We got an extreme yes. Um, okay, so let's see. Exceptional yes. Your character gains extra insight plus two to the current fulfillment value. So at, uh, IV goes up to 2 out of 12. All right. So um, she's trying to catch up to this cart, and she's riding this leaf, I suppose, <laughs> instead of flying. And she feels the exhilaration. She feels the shame, but the exhilaration uh, wins out. And when she lands successfully on this thing, um, it touches it touches her and she realizes what does she realize uh, it reinforces her notion that this is who she is and she's been neglecting it and uh, sh she feels such exhilaration in this moment that it overrides uh, the shame is still there in a big way right but um, but for a moment she forgets it um, when she recalls it, uh, there's a little ping of increased shame for having forgotten, but it's fleeting. And that exhilaration 
buoys her uh, in the rest of the scenes that we that proceeded from there. This whole beetle wagon. She doesn't have a lot of time to process this right in the moment. So she grew a little. She hasn't flown like that since uh, since whatever it was that happened. And now that she has, um, it's rekindled in her. I don't know. It's opened a door. It's uh, there's something in the back of her mind thinking maybe she's. Uh, I don't think she's ready to say she deserves to be able to fly. But it did. Uh, it does touch her in a way. This is who she is, and it's not right, regardless of what happened, to deny who she is. And that, my friends, is August 26th. So, we shall say goodbye for now and visit Ivy and friends again tomorrow. I hope you'll join us. Thanks for watching. <laughs>